what works better for conversions, for making sales, for, for getting people to take action on your website? Short copy or long copy? Short copy or long copy? What works better? This actually came up and I'm deciding to address it, I suppose, because I had something happen on a client project where, um, you know, neg no negative feelings towards the client for this, but, but um, something happened where they actually surprisingly added a bunch of copy to a particular page that I, um, that they were building as part of a funnel that I was, uh, I was doing with them. And in adding all of this copy, it went against a best practice for that particular type of page. And um, this may sound weird coming from somebody like, I'm known for writing thousands and thousands and thousands of words in a single sales message. A lot of times my, my sales letters or VSL scripts or, you know, webinar script, whatever, whatever the, the media is, my core selling message is often around 10,000 words, um, which takes about an hour if it's going to be read. And so I write long copy. I write really long copy. And so, um, why would I object to somebody putting more copy on a page? Well, um, <laughs> number one, I might object if I think that copy's bad and it's not my copy, whatever. But that wasn't even the case here. Like, I actually thought that it was good additions to the page um, just from a messaging standpoint. But what this particular page was designed to do was be was to be a page where you landed this, at this page there was a promise to be able to watch a video. And um, all that you have to do to watch that video is enter your email address. And fundamentally the video, like the promise of the content of the video uh, is, is encapsulated in the headline and the, um, and, and the thumbnail image of the video. And, and, and so like all the copy that I gave them for this page was headline, a uh, little bit of copy for a, for a little box on the right hand that si side that said something like to get this video, click this button, right? Um, and then an uh, uh, opt-in pop-up, pop-over box, like a box that appears. Once you click that button, a box appears over the page that allows you to enter your email address to access the video. So very small amount of copy. Primarily, it's like a headline and subhead. Um, for for the page and a headline and subhead for the opt-in box. And they decided to add some testimonials, some miscellaneous content below all of that on the page. And when you load that page for the first time, what ends up happening is you end up, like primarily you just see what I wanted on the page in the first place, right? But it gives you the opportunity to scroll and to get lost in that messaging. And not only that, some of my messaging for this particular promo is meant to be a bit blind, meaning um, the, 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 the lead is indirect and it talks more about the benefits than the actual, like what the product is. And the copy that was added talks about what the product is, which, um, kind of destroys that intrigue of it being a, um, a blind opportunity, like a, a, a new opportunity that you don't know about, that you haven't heard about. And so I told them, like usually my attitude in a situation like this is I may be right, I may be wrong, uh, but if you want this on the page, I would like to at least test my original vision for this page first. Um, because in this particular instance, going back to that that like opening uh, salvo of this video, short copy versus long copy, in this particular instance, I believe that all the copy that you need to make this page work and testing on similar pages has supported the assertion that all you need to make this page work is headline, video thumbnail, the call to action with the button, right, that you can click, and then the opt-in form. And anything else is likely to actually decrease the number of people that end up entering their email address in that opt-in form. 
And so if you want to test a different version that adds all of this other content that I thought was actually pretty good content, right? If you want to test a different version of that, go for it, right? I am not against that, that type of testing. And especially when you start to run a higher volume of traffic, every bit of testing that you can do, especially at that, that like top of the funnel where somebody is making that initial decision to give you their, their email address, to give you their contact information. Like if you, if you can do that, um, that's a, like you should absolutely test it. But out of the gate, the first thing that I'm going to want to try, or at least that I'm going to want to make sure is in the initial um, testing, is a page that does exactly what I want it to do, nothing more and nothing less. And, um, and for this particular situation where, hey, I'm just offering free content to you, all that I really need to do is like affirm that you're in the right place for this free content. So somebody somebody got a promise of this free content on Facebook or in an email or somewhere else, right? And all that I wanna do is make sure that those people understand that they've shown up at the right place to get what was promised and they can enter their information basically as quick as possible to get what was promised. And short, short, short copy works really well in that situation. Likewise, if you have any kind of like lead magnet, so a free report or white paper, or case study, whatever, and people are coming to your page to get that free report, that white paper, that case study, and it's a dedicated landing page for that, a dedicated opt-in page or squeeze page for that, really all that you want is the simplest of simple pages. That's just like, hey, you came here looking for this, this is how you get it, act now, right? And that is very short copy, fundamentally. In almost anything that you can do in testing, like in, in my experience with, with testing, um, is disproportionately likely to decrease the number of people that take action on that page. So when it comes time to actually making like a complete sales presentation, and actually asking somebody to pull out their wallet and give you money. In that case, oftentimes it does require a much more substantial, longer piece of copy. And that's where you get into like 10,000 words to sell an information product that's, you know, $37, $47, $97, even sometimes as little as like $17 or something like that, right? Um, and it doesn't have to be sevens, it could be nines, whatever. But these low price information products that are the first actual financial transaction, um, a lot of times that is a very complex sale to make um, because you're essentially selling an idea and you're asking somebody to give you money for an idea. And that is a, that's a complex sale and it requires more copy. But making the, the sale, and it, it's still a type of sale, the making a sale of, hey, I'll give you this, this free content in exchange for your email address, or I'll give you this content in exchange for your email address. That is a very simple sale. Um, and there's very low complexity to this, I'll give you my email address, right? And so in, in that case, because it's a very simple sale, you can typically get away with a very, a very small amount of very targeted copy. Like, I can help you achieve this outcome all you have to do is give me your email address. I can help you uh, get this benefit. I can help you access this opportunity. All you have to do is give me your email address, right? Very short, simple copy. But then when it comes time to, hey, um, I need you to pull out, pull out your wallet, enter your credit card, uh, you don't know me at all, that's when you get into the longer copy. And so this whole thing of short copy versus long copy, um, you really, like anybody who becomes a more experienced marketer will get to a point where it's not about short copy versus long copy. They will say long copy can definitely work better. Short copy can definitely work better. It depends on the situation. It depends on the scenario. It depends on how hard it is for the prospect to understand um, what they're actually getting and why they should care. Uh, for example, if you're selling, for um, it's, it's my daughter's birthday in, in a couple weeks. And 
Um, she's shopping for toys, right? You don't need a ton of copy to sell whatever toy, like when you can see the toy, especially if it's a fairly simple toy, right? Like, or a fairly recognizable toy. So, um, you know, a doll or a dollhouse or, um, you know, a, a type of like sports ball or um, whatever other, you know, a, a very obvious type physical product. Or, for example, kettlebells. Um, there are differences between kettlebells. Like I, I'm looking over at the kettlebells on my office floor here. Um, the, there are different types of kettlebells, and you might want to know things about how they're cast and what the coating is and um, anything like that, right? Um, but mostly it's it's a cannonball with a handle. And that doesn't require that much copy to uh, to to explain why this one is different, why this one's superior, why you need this one. Although arguably why you need a kettlebell um, has taken entire books to actually get people to buy into that, which are longer than a 10,000 word sales letter. Um, so this whole idea, right, of, of um, complexity versus simplicity, it's not necessarily dollar amount. It's not necessarily a product type, although certain products, um, for example, physical products might predispose themselves to shorter copy. Uh, what it is, it's about the complexity of the decision-making process. It's involved the complexity of the transaction, how much you're actually asking for from them. And I'm not necessarily talking price. Um, once you start getting into a little bit higher prices, the length of copy actually doesn't change that much. Um, and sometimes really expensive things are sold for uh, are sold with less copy. Uh, but really like the complexity of the sale, the complexity of the buying decision is what needs to drive your your own decision about short copy versus long copy. And specifically, if all you're trying to do is give someone something free in exchange for their contact information so you can follow up with them, that can really be very, very, very short copy. Um, and that's what my experience has been. And that's what I was thinking uh, when I was giving this feedback to the client. And that's why I decided to make this video uh, to tell you that you don't always have to write extremely long copy for every piece of persuasion that you uh, that, that you want to do. I don't know. Uh, what's your experience been? Has it agreed with what I'm saying here? Has it disagreed? Leave a comment below. Let me know. Uh, number one, how valuable did you find this on a one to 10 scale? Uh, 10 being the most valuable and why, like what's your biggest takeaway? What's your action item? And then add any comments about your experience and if it agrees or disagrees with what I'm saying. Also tap that like button before you go so you get more content like this delivered to you and so the magical algorithms of the internet will share it with more people like you who will find it valuable. You can certainly share it with folks directly. And subscribe, subscribe here. Also go to BreakthroughMarketingSecrets.com. Get my daily email, Monday through Friday, including these videos and more exclusive content for email subscribers. My name is Roy Fur. This has been a video issue of Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. And by the way, it, like if you are serious about getting good at copywriting and marketing, I offer an entire training library. It's like Netflix, but for copywriting, marketing training, or maybe I should update that and say Disney Plus, where you uh, you pay one price every month. You log in and you get unlimited streaming access to all the content that's there. It's over 120 hours of training currently, and more training is being added all the time, mostly focused on copywriters and marketers and entrepreneurs who are writing their ticket through understanding effective, response-accountable um, advertising. And so there's a link in the description here to, to btmsinsiders.com where you can sign up and get access uh, to all my training. So again, Roy Fur for Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. I always aim for a 10 out of 10 value. I hope that I've delivered that here and I look forward to seeing you again in your next video issue. I will see you soon. Bye.